from Paul's letter to the church at Rome, the ninth chapter, verses 1 through 5. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience confirms it by the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belongs the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, comes the Messiah, who is over all. God blessed forever. Amen. Good morning and welcome. Welcome to this time and space that God has made especially for you. As you join us this morning, may you find the God who has been searching for you, who gives grace and mercy, peace and joy, forgiveness. Above all, may you find a God who shows you love, abounding in all things. Welcome. Please join me now in our hymn, Let Us Talents and Tongues Employ. As we come together this morning, let us join in our call to worship. The day breaks, and God does not let us go. The hour calls, and God does not let us go. The evening falls, and God holds us fast. Let us turn to God in worship. God never turns from us. As we have come together this morning and been called, let us join now in our gathering prayer. God, you see us. You see our struggles. You see our difficulties. You see our possibilities. You see our promises. Connect the dots for us, O oh God. Soften the hard spots with your blessings. Call us in are wandering to hear you say our names. Satisfy our longings as with loaves and fishes and manna from heaven. For you are a good God, a God present in the scramble and in the end. You always, always have a blessing. For this and so much more, we give you thanks through Jesus Christ. Amen. The God who gathers us together and calls us into worship also calls us to join our voices together in confessing where we've missed the mark, where we've sinned. Please join me in our confession. God is present to us, but we don't always feel it. 
God is good to us, but we can't always accept it. Fact is, there are things within and around us that attempt to step between us and our relationship to God's goodness. There are things that we think, things that we do, that act to separate us from God. The church calls that sin. Let us confess our sins to God in the presence of each other. God of all mercy, I confess that sin grips me and I cannot break free. The sins in my mind, on my lips, in my acts, done or even ignored, stand between you and me. My entire heart is not always yours. My love of neighbor falls short. In the name of Jesus, have mercy on me. Grant me your renewing forgiveness. Lead me on paths of righteousness. And I shall delight in you, and I shall follow you, giving glory to your holy name, through Jesus Christ. Amen. As we have confessed our sins to God, let us now hear the words of the assurance of pardon. The God who gives, gives all. The God who loves, loves all. The God who forgives, forgives all. Through Christ our sins, every one of them, the sin of commission, the sin of omission, the sin we confess with contrition, are all forgiven. By the grace of God we are forgiven. Alleluia. Our Hebrew lesson this morning comes from the book of the prophet Isaiah, the 55th chapter, verses 1 through 5. Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you that have no money, come, buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen, so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness for the peoples, a leader and a commander for the peoples. See, You shall call nations that you do not know. And nations that do not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel. For he has glorified you. Here ends the reading of our Hebrew lesson. So, how's your diet doing? You getting the right things to eat? Enough water? Eating healthy foods? Lots of fruits and vegetables, the right amount of grains and meat. Are you eating out a lot? Lots of processed food? Do you feel like junk? Do you have too much fat coming in? All these things we have to worry about to keep this healthy. And yet, when it comes to this, our spiritual life, our everlasting soul. We don't take the same types of precautions. We don't watch as closely as to what we are taking in. How's your spiritual diet doing? Are you getting plenty of exercise? Are you making sure you cut away the fats of the world? Are you getting what you need in order to nourish your spirit? Are you spending the blessings God has given you in order to make sure that you're healthy? Our diets, both for our bodies and for our spirits, need attention. 
And yet, we pay much more attention to the health of our bodies than we do that of our spirits. Think of the amount of money it costs to eat healthy. How much money is spent every year on workout equipment, workout clothes, gym memberships, medications, diet supplements, vitamins, all of that money we hand over to make sure that this is healthy. All of those blessings that God gives us in wages and jobs, in having an income of some sort, how much of that do we spend just trying to stay healthy? And yet, when it comes to our spirit, what do we spend to stay healthy? What blessings are we willing to share are we willing to hand over to somebody else so that our spirits can stay healthy? What exercises are we willing to go out and do? Have you thought about what it costs to keep your spirit healthy? God speaks to us about that today out of the book of Isaiah. Come, you who have no money, Come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Without price. It is priceless. You can't afford it. But God gives it graciously. And yet, we're asked to give of our time, of our talents, of our finances. We're asked to Discipline ourselves the way we would to work out. Now, maybe you're one of those who spends a lot of time on the couch watching TV, more than you should. Maybe you're one of those that soothes their nerves and their anxieties by eating. And not eating celery and carrots, but cheeseburgers and ice cream and cake and pie and those things that make us feel good but don't do much good for us. What are some of the things we might need to cut away and give up that interrupt our being able to be healthy spiritually? To have a good spiritual diet and to be able to exercise our spirits. The first one that comes to mind for me is Facebook. Facebook just makes me angry. My wife wants me to quit looking at Facebook because I'll see things that have absolutely no thought process to them. They don't have a bearing on my world that will anger me. They disrupt my spirit. It's like chewing on gristle. It's not any good for me. It's like eating the fat that's not doing anything good. And it's taking up my time, putting me in a place I don't want to be. So I have to adjust. Maybe it's watching TV and the news. Maybe we need to give some of that up. Maybe we need to start looking at the amount of time we spend with God. Exercising our spirit through study and prayer. Through conversation with God. And discerning what's good for us and what isn't. Maybe we have extra that we could be giving to help others in time, in talent, or in finances. God generously gives us these things. Do we just as generously give back? What would happen if we charge dues to be in church? Like they do a membership to, say, the gym. We'd see a lot less people. That's what would happen. Because we don't think the same way about our spirit as we do our body. And yet it is so important. And there's some other correlations that come in that I absolutely love. My cardiologist tells me, 
15 minutes a day. Get your heart rate up for 15 minutes a day. And you'll be a lot healthier. The same is true with our spirit. What if I took 15 minutes a day just to read the Bible and pray? Would it change my world? Would it change how I feel, what I do? 15 minutes. What if I were to spend a little bit more on helping others and a little bit less on helping myself? I got rid of a little bit of the extra that God is blessing me with to help somebody else. Would it change my spirit? How is your diet? Are you getting the things you need? Are you reading good spiritual books? Reading from the Bible? And then sitting and thinking about what you've read and having conversations with others about what you think so that you can grow and become stronger? Are you taking in a little bit more of the good things that are out there, seeking out the good stories and leaving the fatty stories aside. In a sermon I did a long time ago, I used this as an example because the world teaches us many things about what we need versus what we actually get. God promises us great things for our spirit, for our eternal life. And that is what we receive. But the world tells us things a little bit differently. I want you to sit down and think about the last time you saw a fast food commercial and they bring up that burger. And it's this thick. And it's got a really thick patty on it. And it's still hot and sizzling. Beautiful green lettuce and tomato, bright and red, with the onion sliced perfectly on top, on this beautiful golden bun. And then they give you how tasty it's going to be. What do you actually receive? Doesn't it look something more like a squashed sandwich that's been under the heater for too long? The lettuce has already started to wilt. It's no longer crisp. It's hard to find the patty on the bun. The tomato isn't actually red, but it's more of an off pink and not quite what you would expect of a ripe tomato. And the onion is all diced up and thrown on top. So they show you this great, beautiful sandwich, but they give you something that you have to wring out beforehand because the grease is still dripping off of it. And it's soggy and lukewarm. And yet God promises us something different. So how's your spiritual diet? Are you going out and listening to the world and what it tells you? If you just have a little bit more of this, or if you were just a little bit more that, you would be happy. Or are you willing to turn to God who says, if you want to be happy, listen to me. Come be with me. Serve me. Find your purpose and calling in me. And I will give you everlasting life. And not just everlasting life, but an everlasting life in peace and hope and love, in joy. So I'll ask you once more, how's your diet? Please join me in the hymn, Break Now the Bread.
as we come together and worship, a big portion of that is saying thank you to God. Praising God for all that we've received. And we typically do that through our offerings. Now, obviously we can't pass a plate, but there are many things we can do. So I ask you in the time that we're about to spend with one another, in these moments of silence that will come up, make a commitment to God to give. To give back from your generous blessings that you've received and pledge something to God and then go out and do that. Whether it's of your time, of your talents, or of your finances. There are many ways in which to give back. Let us be in prayer and thank God for the blessings we've received and make a pledge to God to do what we commit ourselves to today. Let us pray. Gracious God, you bless us exceedingly. You drive away despair in our lives and show us the beauty of your creation. You give generously to us even when we don't deserve it. Hear us now in these moments of silence as we thank you for the gifts we have received and pledge to you our commitment to giving back. Holy One, you have blessed us exceedingly, and we thank you. We thank you for those gifts of family and life, of jobs and homes. We thank you for the small moments in life, and we pledge the portions that we have, and we do so faithfully. Give us your strength, your discipline, your wisdom as we go from here, that we would do exactly what we have said we would do today. In the name of your Son, who gave all that we could know you more. Amen. Our Gospel reading today comes from the Gospel of Matthew, the 14th chapter, verses 13 through 21. Now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion on them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus replied, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. The disciples replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And Jesus said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down. Taking the five loaves and two fish, he looked up to heaven, and he blessed and he broke the loaves And he gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate, and all were filled. And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve baskets full. And those who ate were about five thousand men, besides women and children. The reading of God's word, may it have rich blessings on your lives. So in the last section, we talked about our spiritual diets and maybe the need to change up how we're looking at things. In this story, Jesus talks to us about sharing in this feast called life. 
sharing the feast of Christ, which we call life. Here they are. Jesus just needs some time away. He gets into a boat to go to a deserted place by himself. And when he gets there, there's that much more work to be done. Because he comes ashore, and there the crowds have already figured out where he was going to go and have run on foot to where he was going. And he takes and has compassion on them. And he still cures them. And then as the day wears on, they've now gone far away from everywhere. Supper is rolling around. And the disciples are concerned. They don't want to look like ungracious people. So they ask Jesus to send the people away. Just send them off to the villages to go get something to eat. And Jesus teaches them a lesson says, they don't need to go away. You give them something to eat. And they talk about their scarcity. We only have five loaves and two fish. Jesus doesn't care. He looks at them and says, bring them here. And he blesses them. Blesses them. And sends them out into the people. And they collect back 12 baskets after everyone has eaten their fill. They collect 12 baskets of what's left over. This is part of this call and purpose that so often we don't get about what it takes to do things. And what God can do in and through us with what little bit we have. We look at it as scarcity when God looks at it as abundance. We look at it as we don't have enough even for us. And yet God sends them out as small blessings. Takes the little that we have, sends it out, and then sends it back to us. And in this case, they collect 12 baskets full of food. Imagine what God could do through you with his call and purpose. What God could do with the blessings that you have, that you have been given, however meager you think they are, as They are blessed again and sent out into the world. And they come back in abundance. There is a lesson here that has long eluded us. Sit down and think about how we do budget. Right? Well, we took in this much last year. It's going to be tight again this year. Bills are going to go up. We don't have enough to cover. Oh, we're going to have to do something. What if what God is calling us to do is to look at our purpose, to look at the blessings we have, and then send them out into the world and watch what comes back, to place our faith there and see how it can change the world when God works in and through us. God's generosity is abundant and only grows when we share in this feast that Christ called life. But how do we get there? Well, it starts with building that spiritual relationship. It starts with asking the questions of who are we and what are we? What is our purpose and mission? What is God calling us to do? And that can only come about when we watch our spiritual diet, when we get out and we exercise our spirits, 
when we look at everything that God told us in the first part of the sermon and say, what can God do with that? Where is God calling us? What gifts have we been given that God is asking us to give back? And we stop looking at our gifts as being scarce and not enough, but instead look at them as being abundant. When we stop looking at the time we're given as not enough and disciplining ourselves to having a spiritual life, which is the start of this generous life that God has given us and living it to its fullest, to fully partake in the meal and be full just by the little blessings that we're given day after day abundantly. Imagine what could happen. What would be different if we looked at things from that point of view rather than looking at them from the point of view of we don't have enough? What are we good at? What talents has God given us that we're not using? Where do we need to exercise that spirit in us a little bit more? Will it take some work? Yep. God didn't say it was going to be easy. Will it mean that we have to do something other than meeting on Sunday mornings? Yep. Does it mean that we're going to have to try to figure out a way to be a little bit more creative at how we do other things? Or maybe we have to give some things up. They might be beloved things but maybe we're spending money where we shouldn't spend money. Maybe we have it in our head that we've been called to be evangelists, televangelists. I never thought I'd be a televangelist, right? I never thought I would have to do video sermons. And yet, that's where I am today, reaching all of you. Something different. It costs a little bit of money. I've had to learn a lot of different things. But it's also given me the opportunity to watch a new growth, to watch a new way of things happening, and to see how abundant God is, even in this time that we're not able to get together the way we used to. Are we willing to partake in this abundant meal from meager blessings? Are we willing to look at those blessings not as something tiny, but to see them as Jesus did, as a wonderful gift? Bless them and send them out into the world. God generously gives us all that we need to do ministry. The question is, is are we going to share in the feast of Christ in this thing called life Not from a place of scarcity, but abundance. Not from a place of counting crumbs, but being generous. And then watch and see what God does in and through us. What an amazing thing to sit with a God so generous that we are able to do the impossible because the power of God lives in us. This is what Paul talked about in our opening reading, wanting us to see things the way he saw them. He was willing to give up his life in Christ if only his people could have the faith that he saw through Jesus. So, how's your diet doing? How's your exercise program doing? Your spirit feeling good? And are you willing to go out and share generously in the abundant gifts that we are given as a congregation 
as a people and as individuals. Are you willing to share in the feast of Christ called life with those who are around you? May you be blessed. May those blessings go out into the world and may you see them come back in miraculous ways. Please join me in the hymn as we gather at your table. As we come together today for the sacrament of Holy Communion, we ask you all to understand and acknowledge that all Christians, regardless of denomination, tradition, or age, are welcome at the table of our Lord as we practice it here at Roberts Congregational United Church of Christ. Today we will bless the elements which you have with you, some bread and wine or grape juice, and we will partake in this meal together in spirit and in truth. Beloved in Christ, the gospel tells us that on the first day of the week, Jesus Christ was raised from death, appeared to Mary Magdalene, on that same day sat at table with two disciples, and was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the joyful feast of the people of God, men and women, youth and children, come from the east and the west, from the north and the south, and gather about Christ's table. God be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to God. Let us give thanks to God Most High. It is right to give God thanks and praise. 
We give you thanks, God of majesty and mercy, for calling forth the creation and raising us from dust by the breath of your being. We bless you for the beauty and the bounty of the earth and for the vision of the day when sharing by all will mean scarcity for none. We remember the covenant you've made with your people Israel and we give you thanks for all our ancestors of faith. We rejoice that you call us to reconciliation with you and all people everywhere and that you remain faithful to your covenant even when we are faithless. We rejoice that you call the entire human family to this table of sacrifice and victory. We come in remembrance and celebration of the gift of Jesus Christ, whom you sent in the fullness of time to be the good news. Born of Mary, our sister in faith, Christ lived among us to reveal the mystery of your word, to suffer and to die on the cross for us, to be raised from death on the third day, and then live in glory. We bless you, gracious God, for the presence of your Holy Spirit in the church you have gathered. With your sons and daughters of faith in all places and time, we praise you with joy. Holy, 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 God of love and majesty, the whole universe speaks of your glory, O God most high. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of our God, Hosanna in the highest. We remember that on the night of betrayal and desertion, and on the eve of death, Jesus gathered his disciples for the feast of the Passover. Jesus took the bread, and after giving thanks to you, broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ's death, O God, we proclaim. Christ's resurrection, we declare. Christ's coming, we await. Glory be to you, O God. Eternal God, we unite in this covenant of faith, recalling Jesus' suffering and death, rejoicing in Christ's resurrection, and awaiting Christ's return and victory. We spread your table with these gifts of earth in our labor. We present to you our very lives, committed to you and your service in behalf of all people. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit on this bread and wine, on your gifts and on us. Strengthen your universal church, that it may be the champion of peace and justice in all the world. Restore the earth with your grace that is able to make all things new. Be present with us as we share this meal and throughout all our lives, that we may know you as the Holy One who with Christ and the Holy Spirit lives forever. Amen. Let us join in the prayer that our Savior taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This bread which we break. Is the communion of the body of Christ. This cup of blessing which we bless is the communion of the blood of Christ.
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. This is the body of Christ which is broken for you. Take and eat. This cup is the new covenant made in Christ's blood. Take and drink. Let us pray. Almighty God, we give you thanks for the gift of our Savior's presence in the simplicity and splendor of this holy meal. Unite us with all who are fed by Christ's body and blood that we may faithfully proclaim the good news of your love and that your universal church may be a rainbow of hope in an uncertain world. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, we pray. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. In all that you do in the days to come, may you see life abundant. May you share it as if you had more than you could possibly do with. And above all else, may it come back to you a hundredfold in love and in blessing. Go in peace, my friends. Please join me in the hymn, Jesus Took the Bread.
friends, we are happy that you were able to be here today. I hope that you walk away from this service knowing God more and find a place where you have peace and joy, forgiveness and mercy, where you find some hope. We ask that you help us out at this point, either by clicking subscribe so that we are able to be in touch with you and continue the ministry we're doing here through the YouTube channels, continue to bring things like this to you, and if you're able to financially and willing, click the Donate Now button and give of those gifts that God has given to you. Reach out and share with others through us and the ministries we do here at the church. Peace, and God bless you all.